Hello everyone, uh, thanks for joining uh, the presentation about small and medium enterprises moving away from big tech in the easy way. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, once again the SFK team and the FLOSC team for organizing uh, the whole conference. Uh, basically, um, my name is Redon, Redon Skikuli. I come from uh, Tirana, Albania, and um, I'm a long-time contributor in open source projects, including Wikimedia and uh, OpenStreetMap. I'm actually the initiator of um, Open Labs Hackerspace and Liberty Tech School, uh, both local initiatives uh, hosted in Tirana. And uh, since more than a year now, I'm at, uh, involved, heavily involved in uh, the development of the business for Cloud68.co, uh, an initiative I'm going to talk a bit later on in, in this presentation. So while, while uh, I, work, I was coming here, uh, I'll, uh, I was listening to the music, uh, to some playlists, and I ran down to, uh, to some 60s and 70s uh, music. And um, I started thinking about the past and how this uh, was uh, before, how the situation was before. Um, and it reminded me of the Summer of Love, which was in the 60s uh, in the United States. Basically, a uh, group of youngsters, they started uh, gathering uh, during the summer in San Francisco. And um, a, a lot of people started thinking differently from the previous generation uh, after the Second World War, right? And this happened in the 1967, uh, where the majority of the participants in these gatherings and these festivals and these meetings, they, were, they had some uh, uh, similar characteristics. Uh, a lot of them were suspicious of authorities in general and in specifically of the government. They were uh, rejecting consumerist values and of course, since it was the, the talk of the day, they were heavily opposed of the Viet Vietnam War. Uh, the crowd was quite mixed, which means that uh, there were people interested in politics, but the majority were not, was not interested in politics. And a lot of them were concerned uh, with things like art, music, painting, and poetry in particular, and also spiritual and meditative practices. So bear with me. This is heavily related with, um, with business. Uh, and also open source and also the combination of both and uh, what we're doing not only what what is happening uh, right now and not only in the 60s in the United States so one year after this in 1968 uh, one year after 1967 and 1968 a duo uh, called Zachary and Evans they released um, one of their most uh, well-known or the only well-known uh, single of the time called In the Year 2525 uh, which is actually uh, released after the, the Summer of Love and it, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's the music that uh, started me thinking about this presentation um, and how to connect it with what uh, we are doing right now in this day and age. So it, it's considered a one-hit wonder status, which means that they are, it's a group that had only one huge hit, number one hit. It's weirdly technophobic, uh, which was, and very, very different from the, the hits uh, of the time. And, um, but I also, it reflects the, the, the moment where uh, the youth oh, in the United States and generally, in general, in the Western Hemisphere, um, in the Western world, the so-called Western world was at the moment. So if you listen to the lyrics, if you go and search online, uh, you're going to read some very, very interesting lyrics. You can also, uh, I urge you to listen to the song as well. It, it, it goes something like this. You ain't going to need to tell the truth, tell no lies in the year 3535. 35. Everything you think, do and say, it's in the pill you took today. And it goes on uh, with, in the next years, for example, 1,000 one years, in the year 45, 45, you ain't gonna need to, your teeth, won't need your eyes, you won't find a thing to chew, nobody's going to look at you very, very like skeptic or uh, technophobic in general, and it goes on, uh, it describes how an andro android is gonna be. For me, th listening to the song while I, I was at the bus, um, again, it made me <laughs> very, very skeptical because I connected it with what's happening right now. And the, and the, the song goes on and on, 
talking about uh, how you can pick your sons and daughters and you won't need uh, a wife or you, you won't need to get married and stuff like that. So again, very, very technophobic. And this uh, happened in the late 60s uh, in, uh, uh, and we shouldn't, I think we, sh we should learn of, um, there are some s moments, books and songs that are connected to what we're happening right now. A lot of people um, mention 1984 uh, as one uh, a book that reflects what what's happening, so I'm uh, personally I'm not a technophobic, but I think um, w it's it's uh, seeing the connection there. Um, it's very weird for me that uh, the same in 2000 uh, uh, in in uh, 2000 and uh, something uh, uh, a guy called Ian Brown who is a solo artist and also used to be very uh, well known from the fame of uh, the Stone Roses covered the song in the year 2525 which uh, is quite interesting and this happens, happened happened uh, some years ago and um, if you remember uh, the description that I mentioned or the lyrics that I learned before they were mentioning how technology has advanced so far and we are less human than we used to be before and uh, I connected this also with Elon Musk and uh, his his uh, project about connecting our the the, the brains uh, of animals and also humans with computer chips and see how how this our brains react to different stuff. Um, this is one of these uh, Elon Musk's latest projects, which I I find very very interesting but also scary at the same time and uh, but if you see we if we see less um, let's say m uh, technologies that are used on a daily basis and not the advanced stuff that Elon Musk uh, does we are uh, actually living in a world where the dominance of the small uh, small number of companies in 2020 uh, is beyond anything uh, I would imagine in 2002 when I got uh, from my summer job I got my first computer uh, connected to the internet. So if you can see the um, expansion of a company like Amazon uh, at this moment is huge in terms of market value. Uh, I would say that it's, especially after the pandemic, uh, the dominance of in the in the shopping, uh, online shopping uh, platforms, it's, it's amazing and also don't forget that um, uh, also Amazon provides with um, internet uh, server capacity to a lot of people uh, only to understand how big it, how big they are uh, as for um, 2015 five years before AWS Amazon uh, cloud services disclosed that they have more than a million active cons consumers every month in 190 countries including 2,000 government agencies and 5,000 education institutions is more than 70,500 non-for-profits. And the list goes on and on. And this was five years ago. Uh, and I think uh, I read somewhere that uh, more than 30% 30, 30 of the internet is powered by Amazon services, not only for e-shops, uh, for, e for, for their e-shop uh, capacity, but also for servers. And of course we have Google, which is dominant in the search and Gmail. But on the other hand, their their power come uh, uh, with their big power also come um, a, a lot of centrified, uh, centralized decision making, and they can influence a lot of stuff. For example, uh, Google search and Gmail was was censored in Iran in 2012, but also it has been uh, censored by many other big companies, tech companies as well which is very, very concerning, not only for, for Iran, but for any country when uh, you have com big companies influencing or, or closing their services for, for some companies. And of course you have, these are, uh, we need to understand these are huge companies and um, uh, where you know, the human element goes less and less uh, important uh, before making the shareholders happy. So you have um, cases where Google employees protested for this for fair treatment of all uh, people working there, especially women, and Google tried to to shut them up. 
uh, when they try to protest. And the, uh, the, the list of the big tech companies goes on. Apple, of course, in only one case of their, um, their shady practices, they're reportedly giving to the Chinese government access to its devices for security checks. Um, and of course, it's quite ironic because I was in Istanbul and I saw this ad where they are promoting, if you go, if you see uh, down, down in the image, there is the apple, uh, apple.com slash tr slash privacy. So they're promoting Apple pro, uh, products for, for the fact that they are pri privacy aware, right? Quite, quite ironic. And again, I, I think I could spend uh, at least two or three hours uh, seeing cases like uh, the Dropbox in 2005, I think, uh, when they they started, actually they, they initiated, people started protesting bef because they appointed it because Condoleezza Rice to the board of directions of Dropbox, which is weird because she was a politician and uh, Dropbox is a tech company, which is uh, which hosts a lot of the personal data of a lot of people around the world, right? Uh, so, I was, uh, if you go and also see how big these corporations are, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, and, and Alphabet, which is Google, and of course Facebook and other, other Alibaba and other companies, they are starting to close to the GDP of countries like France at the moment. That's their, um, how, how much power and wealth they have. Uh, they have accumulated. So we, I, I definitely believe that we have a big, big tech problem. Uh, not, uh, not only a big tech problem in tech, but also a big tech problem, uh, meaning the big corporations. So um, for me, 2020 and beyond seems like very close uh, in terms of issues and, and, and uh, the way that we are going forward. Um, that in the, with the song that I mentioned before uh, from the duo uh, in the 60s. But not, uh, let's not uh, keep talking about only the negatives, but if we go and see, search around, we will see a lot of these articles talking about how uh, big uh, power is concentrated in only a few companies there. But we need to, to see what are the alternatives. I don't want to believe that we live in a world where there are no alternatives. That we cannot speak up and we cannot change the reality where we're living in, right? Um, so uh, I think that uh, if you search, uh, we, we, we will definitely find some of the alternatives to uh, the big tech um, companies that I mentioned that have accumulated all this wealth and uh, power, and uh, which can also influence a lot of people's lives on a daily basis, and most important, can influence democracy, how democracy works in these countries, right? So you have, for example, for Office 365, uh, the best alternative is out there, and it's quite a solid software, it's Nextcloud. Um, and if you search for, Nextcloud is a self-hosting platform, where, which is where, where you can f host your files, and you have online calendars and all kinds of applications. Uh, the only difference is that it's, uh, it's not on the service of um, Microsoft, but you can host it yourself everywhere you want, right? And you know where their data are going with, uh, with it. It's open source, of course, uh, which means that you also know, uh, if, you, if you have the know-how, you can also check the code and see where, if it's sending somewhere else the data or not, right? So, of course, Another example is the popular email service, it's called Gmail, and uh, one of the raised very good alternatives uh, out there, uh, which I would propose, is ProtonMail, which is hosted in, in Sweden, and it's the easiest way you can encrypt your email for, with someone else. There are other alternatives as well, so just as to Tanota, I think they're based in Germany, uh, but ProtonMail specifically, they are, uh, they are open sourcing a lot of their their applications uh, and a lot of their infrastructure, which means that it's easier for us or anyone that has technical knowledge to audit their code and see where they're sending their data and how they can uh, well, what they, how they do what they do. In business, Slack is a major uh, major platform uh, hosting uh, uh, chat internal uh, chat for corporations. Uh, it's very very popular in in uh, especially the last five years. It's grown in popularity. And, but it has the same issue that the other big tech companies have as well. So 
So all the data go there and there is, there is no control of what's happening with the platform. So if you have a company hosting your, all the chat of your internal company there, you'll be surprised just as any, a, a lot of other people where you read an announcement from Slack that says, hey, we've changed our pricing and now it's very expensive. So in practice, this means that we don't have any, uh, any control over who, uh, the data, where they go and where, where they're, if anyone is seeing our chats internally in, in your companies. Uh, and, but also pricing or other terms of conditions, if they change, there is no control over there. So there is an, uh, at least one alternative uh, that I, I use a lot, it's called Mattermost. It, it has a version that is open source as well and it's also another platform called Rocket Chat that are both, uh, both have uh, open source version community editions. You can self-host them and know where, where, the, where your data are going and who, see, who checks the, the messages between you and your employees and your partners, business partners as well. So again, there are alternatives. Um, for business analytics, there is, uh, for, for website analytics, there is um, uh, Google Analytics. It's considered a standard in, uh, in people hosting and creating websites. Uh, it's everywhere, which means Google has all the uh, data of a lot of people that are visiting websites. And if you are logged in and you're using on Gmail, and you're using Google Chrome, and you have logged in there, logged in there as well, and you are visiting websites that have Google Analytics. You can only buy your device, which, which might be an Android device, and you have logged in in your Android device as well. Imagine the number of uh, data and the metadata you are giving to a huge company like Google and who does what, uh, what, what I mentioned before that they are doing. Thankfully, there is an alternative called Matomo, at least one alternative. There are also uh, more uh, other open source and alternatives out there. This is the one I'm, I'm using on a daily basis for for my business purposes. It's called Matomo. Again, you can self-host it. It's open source. You can check the code and see what the, what it does, where this uh, where, where it sends the data. And especially for companies, it's very very important not to be dependent on for your analytics of your website, which are very very important, on a platform uh, that you don't have any kind of control over, right? Uh, and it, the list goes on, like SoundCloud for, for um, it's the platform, cloud platform for music hosting. The alternative for SoundCloud is Funkwheel. It's a federated uh, platform which, where you can host, self-host your, your, all your music uh, out there. And again, it doesn't track you. Uh, you are not dependent on their pricing, and etc. etc. Trello, very popular uh, pl uh, we're plan planning tool for project managers. Uh, in many businesses they use it. Again, it's in the cloud, it's proprietary software, um, and there is WeCan, uh, the self-hosted uh, alternative, open source alternative to that. And of course, we go uh, the hugely now popular Zoom, unfortunately, which has many, many issues uh, in, in, in the fact that they don't encrypt their data, our data, and the fact that it's we don't know where they're hosted and what if, when they activate our camera and if, if they don't uh, uh, and the microphone and if they, if they do it or not and uh, the pricing changes uh, can change all the time in terms of service as well again fortunately there are very well established platforms like big blue button which is focused on in, in education and of course Jitsi uh, both open source they are growing in, fortunately they are growing in popularity and more people are, are using them. Um, and the list goes on and on. Tableau is a software for business analytics alongside with Google Data Studio, fully proprietary. Uh, Metabase is an amazing uh, open source alternative which is doing a great job on, on, de on developing the software even further. For Facebook groups, the best alternative is this free open source software is Discourse. And the list goes on and on. I can I can talk about this for for ages. So and it, also you can search yourself if you go on on uh, a search engine, not Google, uh, um, but you can use DuckDuckGo to to search. You can search on open source alternatives or free open source alternative to alternatives to the software you are searching for. And I'm pretty sure there's going to be at least one alternative that is solid, that it has a community, and or a company behind that is is developing it. Right. Um, so, 
But w if there are alternatives, why there, uh, w why aren't people massively using those alternatives? This is a question I have uh, on a daily basis, uh, and also it's something that frustrates a lot of people in the free and open source communities. Everybody that is uh, that is like me, that uh, it's it's our job, and or, or we hang out at, at hacker spaces and talk to each other. We know that there are very solid platforms out there that are open, free and open source, they are powered by ethically, uh, ethic communities, or not evil corporations. Uh, and and the, the question always is why aren't um, the average, you know, people next door, why there aren't they using those and why these alternatives are not uh, uh, so popular. The, the, the answer that I have is that, or at least this is what I understood, is that these alternatives are not plug and play. It's not. E it's very easy to sign up for Dropbox um, and pay for it if you don't have or iCloud. A lot of people feel that uh, they need to pay for these uh, platforms and they pay for them. Uh, but they, especially for business infrastructure, uh, people pay a lot for for all these licenses and the, and they don't go to open source free open source alternatives because they don't feel that it's easy to maintain them. It's, it's not easy. There is a big learning curve uh, to, to become a, a sysadmin for, to self-host uh, all this software, right? So they're not plug and, plug and play. Uh, and basically, if you, need to self, if you, if you want to self-host, uh, you need to, to, to find, to learn what server space is, what's the best server or company, or if you want to host it in-house, in uh, you need to buy the hardware and research and and do all the all the research needed out there, and uh, you need also to the, to install the specific software. You need to know how to do it, and of course to maintain the server. And you need to be sure that it's up uh, up and running all the time, 24/7. And uh, you also need to to check the maintenance of the server software. You need to update security updates, check the communities what they're doing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There are alternatives. There are also not only alternatives. Uh, in terms of software, uh, but the good news is that there are also alternatives uh, in the way that people are doing, uh, they can, can move on from big tech to uh, free and open source uh, software instances. Framasoft, uh, a French-based initi initiative, has done an amazing job in France by implementing or developing software that is alternative to, to the well-known uh, big tech uh, platforms um, and you can if you live in especially if you live in France uh, they, they are a very good alternative but also if you don't live there uh, they, they you need to check them in order to to see wha what they offer right but there is also a, a, a network called Libre Hosters which is the network of people and organizations or co and uh, cooperatives that are are using uh, focusing on, on values like transparency, fairness, privacy, data portability, and public contributions to uh, contributions to the commons. Uh, and with these values, they are offering these services for anyone that needs in their business free um, uh, free and uh, infra digital infrastructure that is based on uh, free and open source software, especially in the work from home era, where a lot of us need more and more digital infrastructure, right? Another, and this, so I mentioned Framasoft in, in France, the Libre Hosters Networks has a lot of members um, spread around, uh, quite a few members spread around the world. One of them is, uh, I, I'm just mentioning a few of p people I know that I respect uh, and I know the, of their values, the Libre Ops, Ops team, they are, they are based in Greece and um, they, what basically, what they do is that if you need a digital infrastructure with open source software, they will they can do it for you. Uh, very good friends, IndieHosters, IndieHosters.net, they do the same. They are also focused on, um, uh, uh, they are uh, focused in France, but I, uh, not only. They are a collective, uh, and of course they are members of the other collectives around France that are offering this kind of services. Again, in Greece, there is um, some very good friends co uh, called the, the, from a collective called Stipriza. They do, they do the same. And last but not least, there is, um, uh, I'm mentioning my, my company here, cloud68.co, uh, where 
me and my friends, we are actually basically managing these instances for you so that you don't have to, right? So these, there are companies out there, there are very small, smaller companies, just like uh, the ones I mentioned before. And fortunately, you now can host digital infrastructure easily uh, than ever using open source instances. And by this way, you can know where the, your data are. You can know if your servers use green energy or not. And you can know uh, if it's, uh, that it's easy for you to move around uh, your data from one instance or from one platform to or hosting provider to the other. So again, um, to, find, to, to, to recap, big tech is failing us. All these big evil corporations, they are in for, the, for, for their shareholders. They're not giving uh, us an explanation of what they're doing with their data. We are the product. That's why it's some of the, uh, our, our data are their product and they are selling our data uh, elsewhere, uh, which means uh, that uh, we need to move away from them. And that's why we need to choose small tech and not big tech uh, in 2020. Uh, otherwise, we're going uh, <laughs> to go through uh, a, a, a reality where our data are in, in places that we have no idea what's going on. Uh, and uh, we, you need, I think we all need to choose ethics and not profit or uh, ethics oriented companies and organizations and collectives and not profit oriented. Again, collectives over corporations, but, and the end goal here is not to move to hosting providers, but each one of us for our businesses to move, uh, to, to move to self hosting solutions, right? So. Um, it's very important in this day and age, not only for individuals, but also for, for small and medium enterprises to, to have these options. I think uh, we're, uh, in the last two years, a lot of uh, ethical companies uh, hosting uh, infrastructure are out there. And uh, if you uh, choose carefully uh, and you avoid big tech, I think your data are in good hands. Uh, and you won't be based on um, uh, are in good hands in the hands of people that are are working for for the freedom of uh, for software freedom and for ethics and not for profit. Uh, thank you very much, uh, and I'd be more than happy to answer your questions uh, over uh, Mastodon or email or also here at the chat of uh, the SFK uh, team. Thank you. Hi Redan, thank you for your talk and this, for this great explanation. Uh, we have a question here for you, which says, uh, which is most scary, the fact that there is no or pure alternatives to some of the most popular services, or the fact that not enough users would try or just consider other alternatives? Uh, I think that this is, a, this is a chicken and egg problem. So the majority of the people do not uh, use uh, so, as, as if or not a lot of the people do not use software, the software is not going to get improved uh, enough because there's not enough incentive, right? So that's why, but there are some good alternatives out there. I mentioned Nextcloud, it's becoming very solid as an alternative and there are some other, uh, somebody in the chat mentioned Matrix for chatting and um, also there are some other good alternatives for, for self-hosting as well, which is Unihost, right? So I think we just need to start and help more people to, to, to get on board and to get uh, uh, using, to, to using them. I think the main problem is the, 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 the uh, people are being frightened and they are afraid of changing uh, and using a new software. They are more safe on using Dropbox and uh, Zoom and other platforms because they hear all around that they, these things work. And, and uh, uh, nobody cares about, uh, nobody talks about the design. So I think we, it's our responsibility to make this process very easy. Uh, and uh, the, we, new alternatives are going to be there. They are going to be improved, and even if they are not, they're going to be built. So the actual ones are going to be improved. I'm pretty confident about this. About this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, by your experience, could you tell us specifically which uh, categories are harder to migrate into 
follow the process that you explained? Yeah, well, in, in my case, in, in the group of people I'm working with, uh, we have chosen to work with uh, freelancers and small, small and medium enterprises because it's easier to convince and to, to have a one, one honest talk uh, with these people and these organizations. Uh, so in my experience, talking with governments where things move very, very slow, uh, it's a big hassle. And also, uh, maybe local governments, the, the central governments are a nightmare. Uh, and also, big organizations and big corporations that move very slow and they usually want to uh, another big corporation to support them. So I think freelancers and sm small and medium enterprises are easier to get convinced than, than other groups. Mm -hmm, I see, but uh, you just mentioned uh, big organizations and the government. Could you tell us more about their willingness to uh, finish all this whole process? Yes, so again, I mentioned that uh, central governments are harder to get to get um, onboarded, uh, uh, local governments are easier because also the uh, they are smaller as, as uh, organizations and they are willing to talk to if you offer them solutions and arguments, right? So a good example is the municipality of Tirana, where where the local community there started talking with them and uh, convinced them to, to change. Uh, but uh, if you but if you want to to change big organizations, for example, like the EU, there are other organizations that know how to talk to talk their their in their language let's say so for example free software foundation europe or the, the central free software foundation or um edri as well are good organizations that know how to talk big organization big big organizations like the government so if you are a smaller community go to the local uh, local government if you are a big organization i think uh, it's very it's not easy but if we are patient and we work a lot, we're gonna we can we can make it. I'm very confident. Okay. Lastly, because we don't have much time, I would like to ask you if you can explain us the role of the local communities in this whole process. Oh, uh, local communities are absolutely. Uh, for me, they are, they have a crucial rule crucial rule on on helping people migrate, because for example, again, if you if you are a local community and know what you're doing, you can help a local school, which is a small organization, central government, to, to migrate to free and free libre open source uh, software, and also also on the on on uh, other uh, digital infrastructure. So also local communities they localize, they translate, uh, they do the the, the 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 ones I know they do a lot of work also on promoting and also onboarding new people that will improve the software uh, on, on, on some kind of basis. You, you had yesterday Italo Vignoli from LibreOffice and he mentioned uh, that the organization has quite a few contributors from local communities for all around the world. So the, the role of the local communities, especially in countries like you know, Albania and Kosovo, are critical in uh, helping uh, organizations, companies and institutions to migrate from these evil corporations to to more ethical uh, solutions and to free and liberal open source software. Thank you, Redan. Thanks a lot. And it was a Thank pleasure you. to have you here. So in the next session, we have a service bus and micro, micro service architecture by Buriam Hayrizai.